leaving. Um, get going with Lego tactile techniques for teaching text-based tools. That's a tongue twister that we came up with. And we are my colleague, Jermaine brooks Kiefer, and I am Tammy Albin, and we thought we would make sure that you could differentiate who we are as our minifigs. <laughs> I think we look very distinct, but some people are like, mm, hair's the same. So we're going to walk you through some things today. Um, so first to start off with is how this kind of came into being. So this, we're librarians, right? This is our Venn diagram. And, um, and Jameen has done Git workshops. She's, you know, the software carpenters instructor. And, um, and after teaching Git in a couple of workshops, one workshop, a few at workshops. At least three. Yeah. She kind of realized that trying to teach Git from the command line is kind of this really abstract concept. And uh, we are across the hallway from one another. I have an office full of toys. I'm up for anything. And she kind of realized that I had Legos and she kind of got this idea that maybe we could collaborate on something together. Which is really great because the point we want to emphasize with this is that you do not have to be doing the exact same thing in order to actually be able to work on something. my mic on. So um, let's do a little bit of carpentry style assessment of the room. You have a blue sticky and a yellow sticky, I hope. Um, blue means yes, yellow means no. So I just want a little poll. Um, hold up the sticky that represents your experience with Git. So again, yellow for no, blue for yes. If you have no Git experience, yellow. If you have any Git experience, blue. So looks like, oh, half and half. All right, cool. Oh, we got, all right. Um, so same code. If uh, represent your experience with Lego. Uh, <laughs> blue for yes, yellow for no. Yeah. Mostly blue, excellent. <laughs> represent your contact with the carpentries, whether that's through a software carpentry or data carpentry workshop, any contact with the foundation, uh, yellow for no, blue for any. Mostly no, all right. So you just got a taste of one of the things that carpentry's pedagogy does with assessing the knowledge of the room. Yeah, I'm slacking, I'm a it's slacker. Okay. So we pose in this presentation that Git is a tool of scholarly communication. Uh, for those who have no familiarity with Git, Git is a tool, an open source tool for version control. So it's a way for you to track the changes to your project without having multiple files, without having to do a lot of creative renaming. It's really powerful. And as we'll see in a moment, it's also really hard to get at. Um, it allows for collaboration and sharing uh, in a, a pretty, you know, pretty robust environment. And it enhances reproducibility because all of the changes made to that project are recorded in the Git repository, and that includes timestamps, who made the changes, all of these things that we want to know about the evolution of our projects, Git will record for us. But it's hard to learn. Um, there is no one, this is a, a graphical interface for Git. Um, this is a, an open source one called Git Kraken. I believe it's for Windows and Mac. Um, but there's no one graphical interface. Uh, it's not native to Git and it varies by operating system. So when you're trying to teach Git, it's really difficult to do this under a graphical interface because you don't know what the, um, what the student has on their computer. And you might get wrapped up in what can the GUI client, the graphical interface client do versus what Git itself is doing. So that's just not really productive from a teaching perspective. So really robust Git lessons, such as those offered by the Carpentries, teach Git on the command line, which is its native interface, but it also comes with its own problems. Uh, I mean, the big one, especially for novice learners, is the fear of the black screen and the blinking cursor. Like, if you don't know what to type, you can't even get out of the window, much less get your work done. Sure. Um, and then the way that the command line gives you feedback on what you're doing is called REPL. Um, 
hang on, I've got my acronym, read, eval, print, loop. This is how you get feedback on what the computer's doing in a command line interface, completely different from how you get this feedback in a point and click interface. So that can be a barrier for many, uh, many different learners. But it is the native uh, operating system for Git. Um, and this is one reason it's hard to teach. The other reason is that Git is such a meta thing. It's operating on the aboutness of our project. The who, the when, the what changes. It's not actually operating on the files themselves. So as a novice, it's very difficult to understand, or it can be very difficult to understand what Git is doing to your project when all you see is just your same file. All right. So making it work, how did, we, how did we do this? I didn't know what Git was at all. And then like, I'm like, what is this Git thing? You have me involved in, Jermaine. So part of this too, right, is investing the time, which is really hard for people to do because we all talk about how busy we are, but we were very intentional. We blocked off two to three hours, sometimes four hour meetings, which sounds kind of, she's still talking to me. Like it's still kind of wild, right? They were but, great meetings. But the, you know, it was like one meeting, one or two meetings, like every two weeks or something, you know, to like really work on this. And we didn't let anything interrupt our schedule with it at all, um, which was hard to do in some ways because there's always a lot of stuff going on, but we really were committed to making this work. We also made a lot of commitments to this. So we committed to do what we agreed to do. We, uh, we committed to learning things in haphazard ways, like she means like, here's Git, boom, and just kind of dropped it in my lap. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, like, so I had to trust. I had to trust what was going on. Um, we had to, you know, so I, we had to respect one another. We had to commit to respecting our colleagues um, that, that we're going to do things to the best of our abilities. We had to commit to being honest when we didn't understand something or we were really confused or our brains were tired and starting to get mushy, um, which can happen, right? Like, you can get frustrated with this stuff sometimes. Uh, so we committed to a healthy process, right? And not just producing something like a final product. We, you know, committed to like everything as we were doing it. Uh, the vulnerability of sharing what we do and do not do well. I have off the charts ADHD. Once again, my wardrobe tells you that. But, um, but like, you know, so like if I'm not focused, I'm gonna need help figuring out how to focus. Um, and we also committed to having fun with this. So, uh, which is really important because I think if you can't have fun with your work, it's a bummer. It's really sad. Uh, we made a mess. We had Legos all over the tables. Oh, we had uh, Legos and then like trying to figure out, having Jameen explain things to me and get at the same time as we were playing with the Legos was just, and people would kind of like walk by, you know, like people are like, what do you, what do you guys, you know, it's just like, it was chaos for people. They're like, don't go near them. Um, you know, and then, you know, uh, Jameen had to figure out how to map the bricks to Git, which I was of no help with, because I'm like, I, what is this Git thing again? You know, so, um, so you know, how much did we include? Did we have too many? How many bricks do we need? Do I need to buy more bricks? Tammy always needs to buy more bricks. Um, so we made a huge mess out of it, but we just went with the mess, right? And like, through the mess, we would figure things out. Uh, we needed money to buy Legos. One of the best things I've ever done in my life is say to our dean, I need Legos. And then we wrote, you know, so we wrote a proposal and we got like a little tiny pile and then I just kept on buying Legos, <laughs> like, and you know, I, yeah, I have a lot of Legos at home. Um, and then of course uh, we had to do something, we had to do the IRB, right, our internal review board because we figured that we should probably write about this experience, you know, to share with folks. And so we needed to do that in order to do surveys um, that we'll talk about in a minute. And then the thing too with this is, is trust is really important because if you don't think this is going to work, you, you know, like you don't think it's going to work as a collaboration, you got to bail. Just be like, I'm sorry, I can't because it would be very painful otherwise. So, uh, so it was actually like, you know, figuring out ways to work together really well with all of this at the same time. So we have, <laughs> for the IRB, right, they have like, why do you want to do this? What's the theory behind this, <laughs> right? And so we kind of, woo, we basically wrote a lit review that was like a thousand pages long. Um, so, so we really dug into the literature to see what was there. So uh, we're not going to talk about all of this because that's just way too much. But the theories that we kind of used uh, to kind of frame what we're doing, cognitive load theory, there's a lot written on that, right? Using neuroscience to maximize what people can learn, uh, remember, and apply. And that's a part of the, the software carpentry's training that happens. Um, and then serious play, there's, so there's Lego serious play, which I'm a trained facilitator. And then there's like the idea of not frivolous play like children do, but serious play that we do at work. Um, and I do, 
I have, I have play days. Like I said, I have play days that work for people. It's good for our brains. Um, but serious play is goal oriented. Like that's the thing, like it's very intentional. Um, it's concerned with outcomes in a process. It's also uh, concerned with identifying a purpose. And by using the Legos, um, it helps people engage in constructing things so that they can kind of remember it better as a 3D model, um, which is really important. It's external to themselves. Um, and it, it aids with concrete thinking, especially when we think of like Git is so abstract. It really helps kind of make it a bit more con concrete for people. Um, if you want to see the bibliography, you can, you know, get our email and email us and I can send it to you because it's huge. It's absolutely massive. Um, so the research that was connected to this along with the teaching that was involved. So uh, we did paper surveys. We had a pre and post test survey set up. They were anonymous for people. Um, we invited people to do one on one interviews three months afterwards so we could see if they actually retained any information connected to this. Um, we collected and tabulated and analyzed the surveys, which once again, I'm just like, I only know Excel. And Jimin's like, well, let's look at Python and Pandas. And I'm like, okay. You know, so um, so we're getting into that a bit too, and then we're starting to actually schedule up our schedule our, our surveys. So the teaching that was involved, planning and organizing the workshop, uh, you know, it's part of the carpentry, so it was part of this two-day workshop series. Um, we distributed the Lego kits at the workshop, and then I threatened people to make sure they gave them back. Right? <laughs> I wish I could give it as a gift, but we can't. Um, and then Jimin taught the workshop, and this is the process that we're going to kind of do again. We're figuring out, I think, when we're going to do next workshops at some point. Because I don't know enough about Git to help teach them, so I just kind of stand there. I look cute. I stand there. I'm, like, I'm holding the Lego bags. I'm like, I'm like Ravana White in those moments, which I will be in a moment, I think, when you do this. It's true. It's true, yeah. So. Um, we were actually going to have people do this with us, but there's not enough time to do that. And we, we, ha we have the some kits with us if people want us to walk them through later on. But this is like our brick manifest. And so these are the bricks that we use. The colors mean nothing. They, are not some, well, they, they do mean something in the sense of Jimmy will walk you through it. But um, I didn't pick purple over blue for any other reason other than when I talked to the guy at the Lego place, he was like, we only have purple. I'm like, OK. So th there was no argument. But we worked through like the, the, the type of bricks that we needed, like the 4x4 brick or the plate, um, and then the larger plate. So are you ready for this now? This is where I am Vanna White. OK. Yes, I am ready for this. And I can probably manage to advance the slide myself. Okay. So in a software carpentry workshop, um, the one that we did uh, back at the beginning of August, this is, the, um, this is the command line interface. So we've got the prompt at the top. And then the dollar sign is just part of the prompt. That's where you type. And so what I'm going to show you is the, um, the mapping of the Lego brick to the actual git command that people are typing in this workshop. So the first command that you type when you create a git repository is git init, and it is initiate. And when they do that, they get their uh, gray 8 by 8 plate, and they put it in front of them. Kaboom. In, in the process of doing this, they are creating a file. And then this is a file that they continue to edit during the workshop. And so the file is represented by the two by four brick. I had, to, I had to learn Lego terminology for this. This is really fun. So the file is represented by the brick. And then in order to add changes that you made to the file to the Git repository, you have to do it in two stages, which freaks people out. So the first thing you do is Git add. And the add is represented by the little plate of the same color as the, the brick, which it represents the file. So you add your file, so you put those two things together, maybe, and then you stick them on to the plate that represents your repository. But you're not done. Then you have to commit. And so the commit is always a black two by four plate, always. So you commit and you add a message that tells future you what you did during this change. And so you have your first commit in the Git repository. I feel like an airline steward. <laughs> so in the Carpentry Workshop, we go through this process of uh, making changes to the file, adding the file, committing the file, 
in, a, in the course of several different contexts over three, three and a half hours. It kind of depends on how the workshop is going. Uh, so the learners are doing this over and over, and we do it over and over with the Lego. So here the, the learner has edited the file, has added the file, and now is going to commit again with a message to future them, this is what I did. And this happens, I'm not gonna belabor this, but this happens something like five or six times over the course of the three hour workshop. So I'm gonna move through these and you, really fast? you can build really fast if you want. Um, so Tammy said that the colors don't mean anything. I mentioned that the commit is always represented by the black plate and that's so you can look at the tower and see the separation from one change to the next. Uh, the other thing that I found when actually teaching this in August was that if I could, yay, if I could alternate the bright color with the darker color, that made it a little bit easier for people to see. We were in a big auditorium, people were sitting in the way back. So having, that, having the contrast uh, between the two, the two kinds of colors was really helpful. So when they're done, they have a tower that looks like that. And now I need to get to my next note. So this is what the, it represents the repository as a whole to that point. And then we can do things like explore the history of the changes made to the repository. Um, Git has native functions that will do this. One of the conventions is called head. So you can refer to a set of changes by this notation, head is always the top, head minus one, head minus two, head minus three, head minus four. And with the Lego and the, the delimiter, basically, of the black plate, they can see where they are in navigating head, head minus one, head minus two. Because if you don't have any kind of physical representation of what Git is doing, this is really abstract and it, it's, a, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to learn and it's a challenge to teach. And I just want to point out too, so after our first three hour workshop doing this, I could recreate this the following day, no problem. I didn't remember anything we talked about, but I could draw this and I could remember all of it, which was kind of amazing and weirded people out. So where are we at right now? This is where we're at. We have a wee data set, tiny data set. We had 30 people at the Git workshop that Jimin did. Um, Everybody, everybody gets Lego, whether or not they participate in the surveys, right? Great, thank you. Um, so, so, uh, so we had 28 people participate um, in the pre-test, in the pre-survey, and then 25 participate in the post. Um, uh, so we're planning our post uh, up, upcoming interviews. We're learning new tools, right? So I mentioned Python and Pandas, and then it's like, oh, Tammy, you need to learn Markdown, um, GitHub, GitLab, and of course, Git. So, and, and we're wrestling with this because we're asking our faculty to do the same thing, right? So we should really be you know, engaged in it as well. Um, and so, and we're talking about other workshops and other contexts with our colleagues as well. So we're gonna share some survey results from our little wee tiny survey. Um, we're gonna tell you what our survey says. So I'm not going to belabor a lot of these. There's kind of a lot of them. Um, the big ones are, this is a big one, uh, pre-workshop experience with Git. We had 28 learners respond to the pre, and most of them had little experience with Git. Six had some. Nobody said that they were proficient. So we're, we're not like loading the deck with people who already know how to use Git. Most of them were either neutral or felt intimidated by this tool. Uh, and this was one of the things that we hoped that the Lego would address. Uh, most had never or very f or few times used any Lego in a professional capacity or use Lego to understand a complex topic. So we're looking at a group of respondents who are not, mostly not using Lego to do the things that we were asking them to do, and who for the most part were unfamiliar with Git. Um, after the workshop, we had 25, mostly 25 responses to the post-workshop survey. Um, most of them said that the lesson material was new to them. Not really a surprise, since most of them were uh, new to Git also. Um, and then we had a quiz. So part of the, uh, 
part of the post-workshop survey was a little quiz where we had a picture of the piece of the Lego build that corresponded to the command that they were uh, entering at the time that they did this. So the three commands were the, I mean, the basic commands that you just saw, get init, get add, and get commit. And so we were trying to see if they were associating the command with the appropriate brick. Um, so for get init, 22 of them got this question correct. For git commit, 24 of them got this question correct. This is out of 25 people. And for git add, 24 of them got this question correct. So we were, we were pretty pleased with that. Um, we wound up having some people skip some questions because they had to leave early, so they only did the front of the survey and not the back. We can talk about survey design at the break if you want. Um, 13 of them found, uh, out of 17, found Git less confusing after using the Lego, so yay. And then we wound up writing a really dreadful question that in turn, it wasn't a dreadful question in terms of what it asked, but in terms of analyzing the data, it was horrible. So we had to deal with all of the ways that people answered this question. So I can't show you a chart, but basically the three helpful things in general that people found about the workshop, the, the ways that they remembered Git, typing the Git commands, hearing the instructor's directions, and then building with the Lego bricks were the top three. So yay. Is this you or me? Sure, I, I can be me, why not? Okay. Um, and so, uh, so our next steps, right? So we're gonna be learning a lot more software. Uh, and then we're also thinking about uh, other ways, you know, how would we represent a git push? How would we represent a git pull? How do we do branching and cloning? So these are, I need to learn what those are, first of all. Before we do that, I'm, I'm on it. Um, but those are the areas that we're kind of looking at. So, uh, which means different pieces of Lego to play with for this, which will be fun. Um, and so uh, we, have a, we have a lot more ahead of us, but I think it'll be a, a pretty good time. And so thank you, questions. What is your target audience? Is it is it graduate students? Is it students in like the engineering sciences that are? What is the what is the target audience? Sure. So we advertise the software carpentry workshops uh, across campus. We don't limit it by discipline. We don't limit it even by affiliation. People who are not affiliated with the university could come to these if they want to. But in practice, primarily the people who are able to carve out the time to come are graduate students and postdocs. We do see a few faculty every now and then, but for the most part, it's grad students and postdocs. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. It just occurs to me that, just listening now to the demographic of your, your composite of your, your class so far, that I, it, I wonder whether when the generation of Minecraft comes to get, whether the digital manifestation of Lego-ness of Minecraft will help or hinder or... It might, yeah. I might be dead by the point that time comes <laughs> around, right? Like, because I don't understand Minecraft. And I think they're the odd looking Legos, right? But. Um, it's, it's, I mean, I think this will work for a while, right? Like, I th like, personally, like with me, like what I've seen is like, and I'm mostly an instruction librarian, is um, I gotta kick it up new every at least two years, right? So this will work for a good chunk of time, I think, in a, in a lot of ways, but then we'll probably think of other ways to, to kick it up as well. I mean, it, I take your point. Um, one of the things that the Carpentries does in instructor training is be very intentional about how many interfaces the learner is having to deal with in learning the tool. And I, it would be interesting to see how a novice learner would deal with like switching between a, a Minecraft window and the Git window. Um, and the, the Lego is really nice for that because it's a completely different experience of interacting with the with the concept. Other questions? Sort of a practical meta question for people who are too shy or who want to be more hands on, how can they reach you for the rest of the conference if you are available? We got cards. <laughs> yeah, so we have postcards out um, on the um, 
where the, at the coffee stand. Uh, we do have some Lego kits here and the break is next. So if you want to find us and actually play with the kit and see what's in it, uh, we'll be out, uh, we'll be out during the break. We have our cards. We have, uh, we have Lego crayons for you. If you want a Lego crayon. Look for my pants, you'll find them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, lots of different ways that you can get in touch with us. We done? All right. Thank you so much. <laughs>